Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly upload Excel data to a SharePoint list using a Power App. If you enjoy Power Apps, Power Automate, SharePoint Teams, and Power BI videos, feel free to subscribe because I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so I'm going to be showing you guys how to quickly upload Excel data to a Power App. So I'll be working with my contractor list. So I'll be uploading this Excel data. I have all the columns needed. So first name, last name, favorite sport, job grade, and status. I have all of these. I'm basically going to copy this, paste it in an input in my Power App, and then just patch all that data into my SharePoint list. So you will need to define your columns. So in this case, I have five columns because I have five columns in my SharePoint. Let's go ahead and navigate over to my Power App. I'll go ahead and create a new Power App. All right, so I have a new screen right here. Let's go ahead and up, add my data. SharePoint. I'm just going to upload my contractor list here so we can use it to patch uh, this Excel data into. So the reason I'm able to do this is because Excel actually has, when I copy all of this data, it separates it by tabs and then it separates each line by a new line character. So tab and new line characters are actually characters, but you just can't see them. I'm going to navigate over to this website to view non-printable Unicode characters. So if I paste in all my Excel data, you can see that we have these characters here that you can't really see from the copy data, but there's obviously tab characters here, and that's what the nine means. And then we also have the line feed characters. So line feed basically means new line, and that's how the Excel um, separates each set of data. So if you wanna copy it somewhere else, and basically what we're gonna do is split on these characters. I have my new screen, let's go ahead and add an input. Just do a text input. I'm just going to remove the default on the right hand side and then change the mode to multi-line. So if I went ahead and pasted in my Excel data, just do a backspace because it automatically put that on a new line. So we have my Excel data right here. Let's go ahead and now add a button to do all of these, these calculations. And I'm just going to be using a couple collections for this. So first let's go ahead and do a clear collect. So we'll just name this COL excel data and i want to go ahead and split this data by new lines so the new line is a formula and just use the character formula so it would be character 10. so we want to go ahead and do split and for the text we're going to do text input one dot text it's going to be whatever your text input uh, component is on the left hand side. So in my case, it is text input one. And I'm just getting that text. So we're going to be splitting that data by char, so character 10. 10 is the line feed character. So it's going to split all of those. And in my case, I will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I will have nine rows of data. Let's go ahead and close up this clear collect and we're just going to run this really quick. And we have all of the data on separate lines. So that's exactly what I want. I want all the data on separate lines. Now I just have to split it by the tab characters. We need to do a for all. And for all of the COL Excel data, so my previous collection, we're going to want to collect we're going to want to collect this in a new collection. So we'll just do uh, COL Excel master data. And in this case, I can define some uh, column names and let's go ahead and just do the regular names that I'm using in my Excel document. Sorry, I keep pressing tab and it auto fills uh, what it wants to. Last name. Favorite sport. Job grade. And 
then the last one is status. All right, so these are the five columns I'll be working with. I'm just collecting it in my COL, Excel master data. So that's a collection. And let's go ahead. Every time I run this, I want to clear that collection so we don't accidentally hit the button twice and have duplicate data. So I'm just going to clear that collection up top. So clear Excel master data. Okay, and we get an error message because we didn't declare that yet. So let's go ahead and comment it out. Okay, let's go ahead and close this parenthesis up. And now we just need to fill in the data. So for this one, we're going to want to get the first split, this record. And we're going to want to split it with the tab character. Actually, it might be this record.value. So we'll do this record.value. And we're going to split it on the tab character, which is character 9. And let's close that up, see if we get an error. The first split, this record value, character 9. So it should get us, in my, the first case, Billy. It will get us that because we're splitting it on that. And we're grabbing the first one. The second one is a little harder because we can't use the first one. So we're going to use the first n formula, which is this first n split this record value character nine. Then if we close up the split and then do the count. So I want to go ahead and grab the first two items. So Billy and Kowalski, because this is the first name, and that's the last name. And then I need to put the last formula in front of it, because I want to grab the last value, which is Kowalski. So if I go ahead and close these up, so we have the first, and then we have the last. So if I go ahead and do add dot value behind these, I think it will output the values. And let me just go ahead and comment these ones out just to see if this works so far. Actually, let me go ahead and I don't want to mess up the collection. I'll just put some blank text in there so we can see that this is actually working. Okay, let me remove that comma. So the first name and last name should work. I'm leaving these columns in because if I commented those out and ran that, this collection would only expect two columns. And if I added other columns in after it the way I did it'll likely give me an error and I would have to rename the collection over so I'm going to go ahead and click on the button just to make sure this is working properly so let's see what's in this collection and we have first name Billy last name Billy as well so something isn't working here so it looks like that wasn't working and that's because I didn't close up the count on my first n so it expected nothing, so it probably only return one value. Go ahead and run this again. And now we have the correct last name, so we have Billy Kowalski. Okay, let's go ahead and do the rest of these. So we're just going to copy what's in the last name. And put this for each other one. And in my case, I just need to change the first n count. So for this one, I want to return the first three, then grab the last one. Same with this one, the first four, then grab the last one. And status, the first five, and then grab the last one. So if we go ahead and run this now on the COL Excel master, we have all of our data. And I'm just going to show this in a data table for everybody. Let me go ahead and do data table and just do my col excel master and we're going to show all the fields you move these around so we have all of our data that we copied over from our excel file so it's all stored in a collection now after i just need to patch each record of that collection into my sharepoint let's go ahead and add another button here you could probably put this all in one button I'm just putting in separate steps to show you guys uh, the whole process and what's going into it. So if you want to put it all in one button, it would just be in this button. And then uh, you would include the patch statements, which I'm about to do in the separate one. 
in that one. Okay, let's go ahead and do the for all statement to patch all this data. So col sell master data because that is where I am storing it. Patching my contractor list. And we're going to do defaults because it is a new record. Close that up. And I need a comma up here. So let's go ahead and put the column names in. So first name. First name is just going to be first name. I'm looking at each record in my collection. And we're going to do last name. We're going to do favorite sport. So this is actually a choice column, so I'll have to put it in curly brackets. And let me see here. Okay, don't forget your single quotes or you will get errors. We're going to do job grade. So job grade is actually a lookup column. So we have to do ID, job grade, and then we have to do value. It's also going to be job grade. They're the same thing. And it is expecting a number value for job grade ID. So we're just going to do value in that. That will convert that to a number. And last, we just need to do status. That is just going to be status. Let me close this up. So final text. So my status is actually another choice column. So we'll just put that in a in choice format. So with choice columns, you actually need to have it in a value, just double curly brackets and declare the value as status. When I click on this button, it's going to patch all of my data. So I want to actually remove that data after so we don't patch it twice. I'll just notify the user. Data has been written. And then we'll just clear out that collection. So COL, Excel master data. So let's go ahead and also reset the text input so that isn't needed anymore since the data is added to my SharePoint list. All right, so all these records should go ahead and be patched into my SharePoint list, contractor list. There we go, data has been run. So if I go ahead and refresh my contractor list, we have all of our new data. So we have Billy, Bernard, Dexter, Wilden, all that stuff. And that came directly from my Excel table. If I go ahead and copy this, paste it in here, this adds it to the collection. I accidentally wrote it twice, and that is because I got to remove the comment of clearing that. So if I go ahead and click this, we have all, all of our data again. And if I click on the button, it's going to patch this again. And if I refresh this, we should now have duplicates. And there we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video about quickly uploading Excel data into a SharePoint list using Power App. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like it. If you have any comments, leave them down below, and I will catch you in the next video.